Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat 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 Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat 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 Shalom, Shabbat Shabbat. Shabbat Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shabbat, Shabbat Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat 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 Shalom. Hey, thank you, thank you very much. Wow, Shabbat Shalom. Praise the Lord, man. You know, um, I've been trying to teach my children about worship and coming to church and. You know, the, the real purpose of it is just to forget about everything else and focus on God. It's God's house. It's about God. It's worshiping God. It's telling God you love him. It's just bragging on your God and telling how great he is. And so can't encourage you guys enough to just be doing that, you know. I know a lot of times thoughts come in our head about our finances or this or that. But, man, you got to block them out. Take captive every thought to the obedience of Christ. You know, take an action, and then you'll see, you'll see actually a response, which is really cool. It really does work. You know, the Bible even talks about meditation. You know, I know there's New Age stuff out there, and the New Ages have hijacked a lot of things from the Bible or spiritual exercises, but, but meditation is important, you know. It's not about emptying yourself and all that. It's about filling yourself up with God, meditating upon His Word. You know, I get these verses, and I just chew on them, and I chew on them, and I chew on them. And I've been given, the Lord has given me a spirit of release to share this truth with you, to share all of it, even the maps in the back of my Bible. I want to show, share those with you too. That, what do you believe from Genesis to maps? So I was just really praying about this week because we know the, the fall feasts are coming up and, and incredible things are happening with Teshuva. And uh, I just want to thank David and Sherry Orcutt for being our health ministers. Amen. And uh, I, just, I tell you, you know, this, this Teshuva for me has been physical, you know. Uh, I've just had this, like, cloud over me, and I felt just kind of, you know, clogged up and everything like that. And so all I needed to do was just to change my diet, do a fiber cleanse, and go to the gym. So I've been going to the gym now for over a month. I feel so much better now. And I'm just saying that sometimes we want all these spiritual things, but if you clean up the physical, you know, take care of your, your temple, and the spiritual is like enhanced, you know, and, and I know that's what we do, you know, as, as pastors, you know, we just get fat and happy, you know, it's like, especially after 50, you know, I love to eat. I mean, it's an, it's an event. If I'm going to have a meal, it's an event. I get to have an event. I'm going to eat now, okay? Please, let me have my event. And, and, it, and then, of course, it turns into being overweight and overeating. But like I said, I know, I know what pastors can fall into, those traps, but you got to break those things. You got to say, you know, and, and, and what's really in, inspired me is both Nehemiah and Micah play soccer. So I'm sitting in the chair watching them run up and down, and I'm exhausted. I'm literally exhausted watching them play soccer. And, and my one son lost a lot of weight. He was doing, you know, training and playing soccer in the summer, getting ready for the high school soccer, and just, just seeing them run and just be fit just made me envious. Like, I, I got to do this thing, you know? So I want to be a mean, lean, preaching machine. I want to bring my guns, you know? I want to lose... My, tighten up my waistline here, and then, you know, then I'm going to get Libby's approval. That's what I'm going to do. And, um, but I really appreciate the, the opportunity because it's not easy. You didn't pack it on overnight. Things take time, you know. So, so I, I tell you what, I'm really purposing to, uh, to feel better and to do better, you know, because we are in the last days, and we got to be fit. We got to be fit, amen. We got to be ready to go. So I'm excited because, you know, the Father was really sharing with me about the book of Hosea and the great return. You know, I, I could share about the feast and the fall feast and all that, but we're already into that. Uh, next week, it's going to be really encouraging because both Mike and I are going to share about Yom Teruah and the 10 days of all. Okay, so we are uh, closing in on the end of Deuteronomy as well. Incredible things are happening. Uh, if you want a word from God, please read the Torah portions. Please read the half Torah. Come on, everybody. The prophets have spoken what's going to happen. And we don't read them. The prophets have already foretold that you would come out of the nations not Jewish and do what you're doing. They've already foretold this. Amen? So with great inspiration and, and guiding of the Holy Spirit and through academia, I want to share with you on the book of Hosea. I want to share with you on the book of Hosea and the great return because I'm telling you right now, this is an incredible story. So what I've done is I've highlighted the best scriptures. We're going to publicly read the scriptures. And I'm hoping to take this particular teaching and make a great DVD out of it. 
Amen. And have it in the marketplace so that we can give it out to our Christian friends and brothers. We can give it out to the family, whatever you want to do, and say, you've got to check this teaching out. Amen. Why? Because we believe in God and we believe in the Bible. And that's how we live. We don't roll the dice. It's not Russian roulette. Life is full of purpose, and we need to have a purpose. And God gives us purpose. So I'm going to be giving you 23 years of experience uh, as far as uh, that goes. I was, I was actually born again in March of 92, but in 1995, I came into my Hebrew roots and everything. So basically, you're looking at, you know, what, 20, 24 years? basically, of Hebrew roots. So I'm going to share these 24 years of my experiences in the Hebrew roots movement and studying the book of Isaiah, and I think you're going to find it quite interesting. So let's move on here. Let's look at it. Uh, Once again, Hosea's ministry was estimated to be from 770 to 725 B.C., okay? Hosea's ministry, Hosea the great prophet. Hosea was a prophet sent to the northern kingdom of Israel, the ten tribes, before they were taken captive by the Assyrians in 722 B.C. Hosea was told to marry a prostitute named Gomer. Boy, you really got to hear from God to do that, don't you? Well, some of us do it willingly. But I'm saying that this guy had to be told to go marry this particular woman. Why? He was sending a message. Now, uh, just for the sake of time, whatever, don't try to keep up with taking notes. What you can do is contact the office Call Kathy, give her your email address. We will give you this PowerPoint, amen? We'll give you this PowerPoint, okay? So here we go. Somebody's trying to get ahead of me. Kathy, you trying to get ahead of me over there? All right, are you ready? Now, you're going to see certain terms like condition, future, prophecy, judgment, okay? This is how we develop our case, all right? This is how we develop our Okay, so let's look at it right out of the gate. Let's publicly read the scriptures. Hosea chapter 1, verse 2. Here we go. This is the condition of the people. The beginning of the word of the Lord by Hosea. And the Lord said to Hosea, Go, take unto thee a wife of whoredoms and children of whoredoms, for the land hath committed great whoredom, departing from the Lord. Now, you know, when you go into whoredom, the land beneath you goes into whoredom. You take whoredom wherever you go. The place becomes whoredom. So look at what he's saying here. He's telling them what? The condition. He's like, okay, Hosea, I want you to take this this woman who's a prostitute, Gomer, and marry her. She's a prostitute. She gets around. Because it's a picture of what my people are doing. I'm going to use you as an example. Good for Hosea, right? He's obedient. So let's begin this story. So Gomer, Hosea's wife, bore three children in this order. Gomer, Hosea's wife, bore three children in this order. Number one, there was Jezreel between Hosea and Gomer, a son. His name means God will scatter or sow. How many of you understand that? God will scatter, God will sow. He was legitimate. He was legitimate. He came from Hosea and Gomer, this son. So she's already a prostitute. It's kind of a picture of when we got kicked out of the garden, right? We didn't listen to God. We were unfaithful. That's a sign of adultery. So we got kicked out of the garden, right? And so God decided to do what? To marry us. So you can see, so this, still see this connotation of Adam and Eve in the garden kind of thing. So number two, she has a daughter named Lo Ruhamah, Her name means not having obtained mercy. She was illegitimate. What did Gomer do? She went back into harlotry. Not only that, but she had a son named Loami. His name means not my people. So there's a legitimate son, Jezreel, and there's two more children, one daughter named Loruhumah, no mercy, and Loami, not my people. So that's pretty stiff in and of itself. I mean, would agree. So these are not the children, uh, the last two of Hosea and Gomer. These are children that she went out and and, and got away from, she broke the marriage covenant. Does anybody see that? The threefold purpose of the book of Hosea, this is so important in all the years that I've been studying Hosea, this is so important for you to understand because we get the good news. Say, we get the good news. We get the good news. Number one, to expose the hearts that had backslidden into harlotry and gross sin right? 
Now, that's the condition. It's not good, is it? The condition's not good, is it? Number two, to pronounce judgment on the people for their sins and the captivity that they would go into. So with the condition comes what? Judgment. Does everybody see that? So number one was the conditions. They were not good. God had to judge them because they broke covenant. It's only fitting that you look at what? The curses and the blessings in Deuteronomy, do you not? 14 blessings coming from 14 verses, but then the rest are cursings. If you do this, this is going to happen. Does everybody understand that? Even on the Land of Israel network, even Yishai Fleischer was saying, an Orthodox Jew, that we can see in the, in, in, the, in the chapter, in the cursings, that that's where we can find the Holocaust. That's why the Holocaust happened. This is a Jew saying this. So, number three, to give the promise of forgiveness, restoration, and blessing of Israel in the future. Does everybody see that? It's not about condition and judgment now. It's about restoration. It's about forgiveness, his mercy. Amen? He loves you. You're good enough. The question is, do you want what he has to offer? The Apostle Paul loved Demas, a fellow laborer, in his letters. Next thing you know, the last thing he writes about Demas is that Demas has forsaken us. He's gone back into the world. Is that what you want? Remember, these people are making millions of dollars in Hollywood. Professional athletes, millions of dollars for a one day, one day of playing, thousands of dollars. Listen, that's their reward, folks. What's your reward? They can have those millions. What I'm getting is, is forever. What I'm getting is eternal. No man will take it from me. And my faith will justify the works that, that I'm going to do in order to get what he wants to give me. Because faith without works is dead. So be careful what you're doing and how you do things because it's important. Amen? We're justified by the finished work of the cross. But now that we're being sanctified, he requires action from us. He requires an action. So there's the threefold purpose. So Hosea began prophesying at the end of a period of material prosperity under King Jeroboam II of Israel. 2 Kings chapter 14, verses 23 through 27. Wow, the prosperity message. We don't have that going on today, do we? Don't you believe that America is prosperous? All of you are in prosperity. Even if you're struggling financially, you are living in prosperity. You don't have a dirt floor and a thatched roof. We are very prosperous. Unfortunately, however, during most of Hosea's lifetime, the people were spiritually bankrupt. Listen, I know as a pastor that I can do better and I need to do better. And guess what? I am going to do better. Amen? I know as a pastor I can do better. I need to do better. All of you work jobs, you work 40 hours a week, 50 hours, you work two jobs, whatever you're doing, it's my responsibility to give you the word of God, to give you a word from the Lord, and to give you the best word that you deserve as the bride. I could sit around and be lazy and just throw a couple teachings together. No, no, that's not what the Father wants. I'm not a hireling. I'm a son of God. I'm not a hireling. I work for him. I serve him. Whatever he wants, he gets. I think Jeremiah is my poster child prophet. Man, Jeremiah preached for 50 years. People still didn't listen. And he only had his scribe as a friend. I'm doing really well, folks. Even if it just gets down to my wife and I, at least it'll be her and I. Like Jeremiah and Baruch. Remember, this is not a popularity contest. This is an obedience contest. Amen. I was sharing with Giovanni about boxing Paul likens life to a race and to shadow boxing. It's actually in the Bible. Shadow boxing is in the Bible. He buffets himself. He boxes him. He shadow box. Think about it. Despite the punishment that God promised to bring upon them, there is a strong attitude of hope that is evident throughout the book. Hosea chapters 5, 9, and 10. There is a strong attitude of hope that is evident throughout the book. Let's continue on. Just as Hosea bought back his unfaithful wife, Israel will be reunited by God in the last days. 
Nobody dictates who Israel is. God dictates who Israel is. Remember when Peter felt like, you know, the Gentiles are unclean? What, what did God say to him? Call no man unclean. The Gentiles aren't unclean. They're a part of my program. They're a part of my plan. So the northern kingdom of Israel went into captivity around 722 B.C. That's why you hear me always say, we haven't had Taurus in 722 B.C. It's true. Monday nights, this place should be busting out of the seams. You need obedience, not ideology. You need to be in a small group. You need to be in Torah because the lawless one is coming. In Daniel, it talks about the Antichrist. He'll change times and laws, it says. He's a counterfeit. He's going to change times. What? Because we celebrate the feast days. He's going to have his own days. Times and laws. He's going to have his own commandments, his own rules and regulations. We have them through the Torah, through Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The word of God made flesh. Amen. Are you guys ready to begin the study? Audrey, are you ready? Put your seatbelt on. Put your tray up. Listen, I can't believe I'm sharing this. Because this is the word of the Lord. True. This is the word of the Lord. So many people want a fresh word. They want to hear from God. I'm telling you right now, this is a fresh word from God. And this is your opportunity to go out and be a light and shine. And once you get this message, it will change you. You will be a servant and you will be a witness. It will motivate you to love those that are lost, to love those that disagree with you, to love your enemies. It will, it, the gospel, this will change you. So here we go. Hosea chapter 1, verse 10. Let's read the scriptures publicly. Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, you are not my people, there it shall be said unto them, you are the sons of the living God. Notice the future, right, to the top. Do you see the prophecy at the bottom? Do you see it? Say the future is now. The future is now. Boy, that's scary. The future is now. Hosea 1.11, let's, let's keep reading. Then shall the children of Judah and the children of Israel be gathered together. And appoint themselves one head, and they shall come up out of the land, for great shall be the day of Jezreel. Jezreel is the legitimate son. Say, Jezreel is me. Jezreel is me. I'm not Lo me, not a people. I'm not Lo Ruma. No, I'm Jezreel. Thank you, Holy Spirit. What's happening is God's redemptive plan requires an incredible message right, of obedience, that here's the message that God would give. It's called the Old Testament and the New Testament. So what happened is, so when Yeshua came and he suffered, died, and was buried and rose again, and Jesus is God and God is Jesus, when this all happened, the gospel had to go out because it was part of what? The redemptive plan of God. So what's happening now, and we're going to discover this in the prophecies, what's happened now is God is beginning to write Torah on minds and hearts all over the world because the time of gathering is upon us. The time of the Mishpachah, the family of God to come together, has hit the earth. And notice what it says here. By the way, what you speak comes towards you. That's why I give you a lot of verses. Because, you know, they, they say, you know, death by PowerPoint. You can only have like 20 slides. You lose people. No, the Lord's like, no, you give them the slides because it's my word. It's my word. It's my word. See, right now, this world is in total chaos. There's an upheaval. And I'm glad that we've had Torah for over 20 years in this congregation because we, we don't have to play that game. The European Union is in an uproar. You've got Brexit going on in England. Syria has been in civil war for I don't know how many years now. Half a million people died now, all of a sudden, there's a conspiracy theory that Iran has hit Saudi Arabian, you know, f you know, fuel targets or whatever you want to call it. You've got this election in Israel that nobody knows who the next prime minister is going to be. It's a parliament like Britain. They've got to form a coalition. It's just crazy madness. You just had a big display of people saying, the, you know, 
the climate change and all this other stuff all over the world. People are saying, you know, we got to do something about that. There's more important things than that, folks, like lost souls. Yeah, it's getting warmer. We live in Florida. I know that. But this is what people put their heart and soul into. Not that it's wrong. You should take care of the earth. I'm just saying that sometimes we'll take a ladder and we'll put it up the wrong wall and we'll realize I shouldn't be up here fighting this battle. This isn't what I wanted. This isn't what I thought it would be. I mean, what I'm talking about. My ladder is Israel and the Jewish people in this community and the next generation. That's my ladder. That's my wall. That's what I'm fighting for. That's my priority. So here we have, of course, what? Judah and the children of Israel. Amen? This is why we're seeing the restoration, the regathering of the whole house of Israel. We're seeing Jews and, and Gentiles coming together. Did you know that Christians United for Israel, Kufi by Pastor John Hagee, they have over 6 million members. So there's awareness among Christianity that we should be praying for the Jewish people. We should be praying for the peace of Jerusalem and all that in that context and that, you know, we believe that they should have a land. They should be able to live there and, 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 and have their lives like we do, live their lives. But we got a horse in the race. We're grafted in. We've got something at stake. We have something at stake. Don't try to figure it out. It's true. Hosea 2, 7. And she shall follow after her lovers, but she shall not overtake them. And she shall seek them, but shall not find them. Then shall she say, I will go and return to my first husband, for then was it better with me than now. Remember, we were all at Mount Sinai. Remember the story of the prodigal son? It's a picture of you. He was in the house at one time. He was in the house at one time. God's redemptive plan is just being unfolded, and you were born for such a time as this to pick up where the last generation left off. That's why you're getting Torah. That's why you're getting all these things, because we're the first generation, and we're going to discover that in the prophecies. I will go and return to my first husband, for then was it better with me now. Is there anybody in here who had a bunch of boyfriends and girlfriends, and now you finally got married and settled down, and you wish you'd never done it? Look at you, scaredy cats. Scotty, raise your hand. I'm sorry. No, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> no, no. Kristen's all I've ever known. Kristen's just been my sweetheart since I was five. We made mud patties together. <laughs> but anyway, you know, this, when I read this verse, I'm like, man, yeah, you know, I messed up and I did things that I should have done. But man, when I found God, it changed my life. And I know why Paul said, man, I did all these things in ignorance, you know, about coming after the way, you know, coming after Christians, you know, and all things that he was very zealous. He didn't know anybody. He says, I did these things in ignorance. Come on, somebody. I did those things in ignorance. Isn't there like a song? Looking for love in too many places, too many faces. Wrong place. I don't know, whatever. See, I can't even, I can't even sing, sing it wrong. But anyway, it just come to my mind, you know. Uh, I believe life is a song. We can edit that later. Now, are you still with me? All right, let's go to chapter 2. Hosea 2.11, let's read it. I will also cause all her mirth to cease, her feast days, her new moons, and her Sabbaths, and all her solemn feasts. Is that restored? You, are the feasts restored? He said, I'm going to take these away from you. So in 722 B.C., when they went to the Assyrian captivity, it was taken away from us. Do you see where he gave them back? Our feast a big deal. That's how Beit Hila was founded, on the feasts. Pastor Tifa and Randy were reading the Bible, and they're like, you know, Pastor Tifa says, look, man, the Sabbath and the feast is, we should be doing these things. Why aren't we doing the Sabbath? Amen. Let's continue on. Hosea chapter 2, verses 14 and 16. Here's the future. Here we go. Therefore, behold, I will allure her and bring her into the wilderness and speak comfortably unto her. And it shall be at that day, saith the Lord, that thou shalt call me Ishi and shalt call me no more Baali, which is my husband versus my Lord. You know that God's your husband. I tell, I tell the enemy all the time. You touch me, you touch Jesus. I'm the bride. See, Beit Tehillah is going into another gear, folks. 
You know, you got what, first gear, second gear, third gear, and fourth gear. We're, go, we're getting ready to go into third and fourth gear at Bait the Heal, and I hope you can keep up. Because God waits for no man. He's going to move. Remember, Mordecai told Esther, if you don't do this, somebody else will. Because God's promises can't come back in all the world. His promises have to be fulfilled. It says, speak comfortably unto her heart. That particular reference there, comfortably unto her, in the Hebrew means, I'm going to speak to her heart. So if you're wondering about the Hebrews of the Christian faith movement, why is there even a movement? What's going on with this movement? What's happening? I'm telling you this from this teaching right now today. I'm telling you what it's about and where it's going. Do you guys understand that? Not that everybody's going to participate. Not that everybody wants to express their faith like that. You got your Methodists, your Baptists, your Pentecostals, and then you got your Israelites, okay? Do you understand what I'm saying? They're practicing their faith the way they want to. Catholicism, the Mormons, the Muslims. You understand what I'm saying? Buddha, I'm just saying that there's, there's been a major, major move of God in the earth. Incredible. I mean, Hebrew Roots is on Wikipedia. It's a legitimate grassroots movement. Has it been hijacked and, and, and needs to be reinterpreted? Absolutely. We're going to reinterpret it. We're going to redefine it, right? Because it's got a bad rap. So once again, he's saying this. But we already went over. The three stages, the three steps that, that, that the book of Isaiah is broken up into. Have we not? Your condition is not good. You're going to be judged. But hey, I'm coming back. I'm coming back for you because there's going to be a generation that I'm going to birth that are going to come from the book of Hosea. Do you guys understand that? You are the people of the book of Hosea. Bottom line. No questions asked. You are the people of the book of Hosea. Say, I'm, I'm the people of the book of Hosea. I'm the people of the book of Isaiah. I'm going to prove it to you. And listen, I don't debate this. I don't argue it. I live it. I'm not in it to convert people. Because some of you know, you know, if you want to eat pork, you're going to eat pork. Right? If you want to celebrate pagan holidays, you're going to celebrate pagan holidays. That's your free choice. But there's a better way. But there's a better way. Yahweh. Here we go. Hosea chapter 2, verses 19 and 20. Check it out. You ready? And I will betroth thee unto me forever. Yea, I will betroth thee unto me in righteousness and in judgment and in loving kindness and in mercies. I will even betroth thee unto me in faithfulness, and thou shalt know the Lord. Rest assured. Look at that. In faithfulness I will betroth thee. Wait a minute. The condition wasn't good. We were judged. They were taken into captivity. Now we have this storyline. He's going to betroth us. When did he betroth us? 2,000 years ago in Yeshua. See, the marriage has not been consummated, and Satan's sentence hasn't been implemented. He's still the prince of this earth. Did you know that? He's the prince of this world. But he no longer has the keys of life and death. You have those given back to you and that authority in Jesus' name. And if you want to sleep with the enemy and dabble in that, you can. But I recommend don't sleep with the enemy. Yeshua stripped them of all their powers and everything. It actually says that in Colossians. Now, in 2 Corinthians, I didn't make another slide because I think you're going to have more than enough slides today. But it's 2 Corinthians 11, 2, and 3. Here's what Paul says to the church of Corinth. For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. For I have espoused you, espoused you is betrothal or engagement, to one husband that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But I fear lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. See, the enemy tries to come into our life to deceive us out of the betrothal phase. He wants to deceive us and get us out of that betrothal phase. Remember, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So we understand natural laws, like a speed limit sign. We understand the stop sign. We understand all these things, gravity. We understand all these things. But there are spiritual laws that God has in place. You cannot violate his spiritual laws. You need to remember something. God is a creator. 
They're still finding things up in the trees in the Amazon rainforest and, and, and thousands of feet below sea level. They're finding all kinds of creations, aren't they? Even digging up skeletons and all this crazy stuff. So remember, God is a creator. But we are made in his image. We're different species. We're a different creation. Even the angels say, why are you so mindful of them? Because God is madly in love with you. He's enamored by you. He likes to watch you. He sees when you do bad. He sees when you do good. Amen? So when you think about it, when we get redemption, because salvation is a gift from God, redemption, atonement, is not given to fallen angels. It's not given to demons or familiar spirits. Did you know that? They have no hope of salvation, only judgment. Because they broke a spiritual law as angels. They were made humans. They were made angels. They were made angels, a different species, the seraphim, right? The cherub. That's what Satan is. He's a cherub. Remember that. He was a created being that turned against God. He broke the spiritual law. You know, when, when, when you watch Star Trek, I, I, since I'm older now, I like to watch a few of the episodes. They're so old. I'm not really a sci-fi guy. But it's amazing how they go to these different worlds and different gods. And You ever notice that? But there's only one God. But people find it fascinating to go to different worlds and different gods and stuff, you know. But it's just something to think about. But he's a creator. I know, I understand the book of Hosea. I understand what he did and what's going on. I, I get it. It's kind of like Moses was the best man at Mount Sinai at the wedding, right? He was the best man for the children of Israel. He had a glorious bow tie. Just shine bright. What about John the Baptist? What did he say? He goes, listen, I'm a friend of the bridegroom. That's who I am. So he's like associating himself with the wedding party. But he understood, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He pointed out, John the Baptist pointed out Yeshua that he would take away that sin of the world. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Now we have Paul coming on the scene. The apostle Paul, who's from the tribe of what? Benjamin. What's happening is the house of Joseph has been scattered throughout. And when, I guess it was, uh, I'm going to look here in Acts, just to give you an idea of something here, because we're talking about Paul real quick here. In the book of Acts, this is very interesting. We know that Paul was sent to the what? To the Gentiles, right? So Ananias was sent to pray for Saul, right? Before he was Paul, he was Saul of Tarsus. How many that, that Ananias was sent to pray for him, and he was not real sure about that? He goes, don't you know who this guy is? You know, I saw his picture in the post office. This guy's bad news. You know what I mean? Like, and, and, and God says, no, he's a chosen vessel. Look what God tells Ananias in regards to the apostle Paul, which will, that'll become his name. Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. He's going to be my chosen vessel. The Gentiles, the kings, and the children of Israel. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. Amen? So think about it. So now, Paul is like the best man. Go pull out of people for his name's sake. Amen? Your life is about what God wants, not what you want, not what everybody thinks you want. Your life is about what God wants. And then we say things like, well, I just can't do this. This is what he wants. Amen? You can have an ideology. You can play around. You're out of the tabernacle. He wants obedience. Obedience brings trust. Matter of fact, he says, I'm going to betroth thee to me in faithfulness. People coming in and out of here is not the bride. You're not the bride. You've disqualified yourself. You can't even sit still for five minutes. I'm telling you a truth. This is serious stuff going on here. And this isn't something you have to put on other people. It's just my observation. Seems like the crowd gets thinner and thinner as we get closer to the end. Call us the Gideon 300 Club, whatever. I'm just saying it's my observation. We haven't changed the vision. But who is Israel? Would the real Israelite please stand up? You ever seen that talk show or that, that, that game show? Do you remember that? They act like they're going to get up. Oh, man, they stumped me. Yeah, these people think they're Israel. They're not. You're disqualified. 
but you're a legend in your own mind. Because I'm telling you right now, obedience brings trust. And when God started having all these Jewish people contacting me and emailing me, I knew the Jewish people had to be in our life because he orchestrated it. I never contacted the first Jewish person. But I knew the restoration of this relationship between Jews and Gentiles has, has begun. There's many organizations out there that are doing it. We're just a little different that we got a horse in the race. Do you understand what I'm saying? Plenty of organizations that are doing it. Christians and Jews working together. It can be done. It is being done. It will be done. Let's look at Hosea chapter 2, verse 23. We're going to cruise here. And I will sow her unto me in the earth, and I will have mercy upon her that had not obtained mercy. And I will say to them which were not my people, Thou art my people. And they shall say, Thou art my God. I want you to prove to me that you're returning. It's disappointing as a pastor. It's probably the most disappointing thing. People in this for years and just they just shipwrecked faith and give up and just check out, man. I'm like, come on, man. It's getting good. It's getting good now. The best is yet to come. I'm not into old glory. I'm into new glory. You know what I'm saying? I was sharing this message. I'm going to tell you this. I, I don't know if I'd plan it or not, but I'm going to plan it now. I meet every week over here in the fellowship hall with three other gentlemen for accountability. Pastor Don, Pastor Jay, and Paul, and myself. And it's a champion's table, and it comes out of the all-pro pastor's ministry. Four guys, like days of accountability. There it is, accountability, right? Peter, James, and John, and Jesus. That's the model. So we're back there. Pastor Jay asked me, what are you sharing on this week? What's going on? So I got my PowerPoint in front of me, just by chance. And I said, I'm sharing on Hosea. I said, you know, Christianity doesn't even know half of the redemptive plan of God. They know part of it. They know some of it. But I said, man, I said, God's redemptive plan is incredible. It is so incredible. And everyone's a player. Everyone's got a part, you know. And I said, I'm just so glad I know my part in what's happening. So I started sharing about Hosea, and I started sharing these other scriptures, and we'll get into that. And all of a sudden, I look up, and the fellowship hall is filled with the glory of God. Like someone had made toast or something. And I, I, I was like taken back by because, you know, you're sharing, you're looking at my notes, I'm looking at them. And I looked up, and I looked around. There was a, there was a cloud all filled in, in the, the fellowship hall. It was full of his cloud. And I didn't say nothing because I didn't want to think, you know, he's really lost it now. I got to share it. That was good enough. But I'm telling you, everybody, this is a truth, but it's what you do with it. That's all that matters. It's what you do with it. See, when I leave here, I know I'm special. I know God's given me a message. I know he's given us this congregation, and I'm like, I'm, I'm living the dream. I'm loving life. I'm loving this because he's really speaking to us, and I get excited in that. I do. I get excited because I want to live forever with Yeshua. I want to get my inheritance. If, if not across the street or next door, I want to live close to the Lord. I don't want to be like the nations coming up you know, from other areas, geographically speaking. I want to be in the land because you'll live there forever, amen? So if, 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 if Peter and Paul are going to quote the book of Hosea, why can't we be the people of Hosea? Why would they quote that book? Two examples, Romans 9.26, let's read it. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, you are not my people, there shall they be called the children of the living God. Once we were not a people. Now we are a people. So what are people doing with other people? Why are you getting away from other people when people need people for the people? No, do you understand that? It's like my job. This, this job would be awesome without people. It would be outstanding. It would be awesome. It's like that joke, you know, it's like when you have a, a good board meeting. You know how you decide whether you have a good board meeting or not? There's two members and only one shows up. That's a good board meeting. You know what I'm saying? That's why your committees and you got to have a small, you know, don't do like the United Nothing. That's just a bunch of chatter and they're not getting anything done. They're just wasting our money, our taxpayer money. That's what I'm saying. Be, be productive. Be creative. Amen? And that's, that's what this message is about because there's a lot of Lashon Hara, there's a lot of gossip and slander and all this stuff going on and people being unproductive and just gossiping. And, and when you should be busy about the king's business, 
You should be busy about the kingdom of God and making yourself better for those around you can be better. I know when I get better, my wife gets better. My kids get better. This church gets better when I get better. It does. But if I go AWOL or I go south or have shipwrecked faith, then, then who wants to start over? I don't. That was the Apostle Paul. Do you see that? Is he not quoting Hosea? Do you have a, a Bible that has cross-references? Get it. What about 1 Peter 2.10? Let's move. Which in time past were not a people, but, now, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. So who got the revelation? Peter. Gentiles were taboo. Did you know that? Jews specifically avoided Samaria. They spe- Isn't that interesting how we still do that today? Oh, you don't want to go to Samaria. Isn't that funny? Like even with Tori, what's wrong with us? That's the heartland of Israel. So here we have Jews going around Samaria, and Jesus just goes right on into the city, goes to the well, talks to the opposite sex, no males around, taboo. She's been married five times, and she's got a living boyfriend. And he stays the night. All the things that were taboo. So, like, people would challenge me and all the decisions I make about having Jews here and this and that. Oh, that's taboo. It's your loss. It's not mine. I'm following God's plan. I fear him, not you. I fear God. I fear God. What can you do to me? Nothing compared to what he can do to me. Amen? I've learned that a long time ago. Don't fear people. Every time you fear people, it ends up in a bad way. Ask King Saul. Ask King Saul. Don't cave into the people. This ain't about the status quo. Are you guys ready? Oh, this is so good. Man, this is good. Did we do Peter the disciple? We did him. Do you see once not a people and then no mercy? But now we are a people and we have mercy. All right, here's the condition. Hosea chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. If you had to have a chapter to read and really meditate on and chew on, this is the chapter. It's real simple. I think there's only four verses. Let's go ahead and read Hosea chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. This is the condition. Now he's telling, he's telling Hosea, Then said the Lord unto me, Hosea, right, Go yet love a woman beloved of her friend, yet an adulteress. Stop right there. Right? I want you to go love this woman, but she loves others. According to the love of the Lord toward the children of Israel who look to other gods and love flagons of wine. Ephraim has a problem with alcohol. I know firsthand, I've been sober for six years, but I'm saying that Ephraim loves alcohol. And some Ephraimites are alcoholics. Some have too much. Have you noticed the different degrees of alcohol, the different levels of alcohol? Have you noticed that? Like there's alcohol in everything. Little displays of carbonated soda, 11.9% alcohol. Right? Isn't it crazy? All the variations of drunkenness. Continue on. Look what he says here. So I bought her to me for 15 pieces of silver and for a homer of barley and a half homer of barley. And I said unto her, Thou shalt abide for me many days. Thou shalt not play the harlot, and thou shalt not be for another man. So will I also be for thee. Hosea is like, Gomer, listen, I married you. I married you. You were a prostitute. I knew that, but I love you. And you and I, we had a son. We had a son, Jezreel, beautiful son. And, and in that marriage, you, you cheated on me. You cheated on me. You cheated on me. And you had a daughter by that other man, Lo Ruma. And then you went and you were with another man. And you had Lo Ami. That's the name. We have our son. Now you have these two daughters, mixed family. But I love you. I love you. And you're going to come to your senses. And you're not going to do this anymore. You're going to come back to me and you're going to stay with me. 
And that's why I'm so adamant about this congregation. You're either in or you're out. You're for me, you're against me. You've got to make a call. Because the scriptures are clear. He even said it. Gomer would no longer do that anymore. You've got to quit prostituting yourself out. Quit being a whore. Because this is serious stuff. Why? Because it's spiritual. You already have a problem with the flesh. How are you going to get a handle on your spirit when your flesh is driving the car? The spirit's crying out, I'm not a whore. I'm not a whore. Why are you driving this car? I should be driving this car. You've been driving this car too long. Get in the back seat, flesh. My spirit's driving this car now, and my car's going to the father. My, my car's going to the husband. Now, I'm sharing this from my heart because I lived in the world. I had girlfriends. I did all this stuff. Let me tell you something. He is cleaning us up. He is cleaning us up. I can preach this because I live this. I know what it's like. It's empty and vain. It's vain. It's all vanity, amen? Did you understand that? Closing out Hosea 3, 4. Check this out. Look at this. Let's read it. For the children of Israel shall abide many days without a king and without a prince and without a sacrifice and without an image and without an ephod and without teraphim. Boy, isn't that us today? That's us. We don't have a king. We don't have a prince. We don't have sacrifice. We don't have idolatry. We don't have any of these things anymore, right? We don't have the priesthood. We don't have, without teraphim, we're not like what, Rachel? Remember you stole the household idols? We don't really have those. We know better than that, don't we? Do we all know better than that? I haven't been to your house and saw a Buddha statue or anything. I mean, I'm just saying. So that's the condition, but this was the future. Say the future is now. Future is now. We have one more verse, Hosea 3, 5. I'm sorry, there's five verses in this chapter. Wow, <laughs> there's another one. Are you ready? Afterward shall the children of Israel return and seek the Lord their God and David their king and shall fear the Lord and his goodness in the latter days. Are we in the latter days? You've come to your senses. You've got Torah on your mind and your heart now. This is what's happening, everybody. Isn't this the coolest thing? I love when I find out how something works. When I discovered this is how a habit works, this is how alcoholism works, this is how this works, and I discover that, it is the coolest thing. It's like when I did the fiber cleanse. I had this fog. It's, my guts were just all bound up. I was just clogged up. And I knew I just didn't feel right. Something was wrong. I'm hearing from God. I'm getting messages and all this stuff. But my body just wasn't really lining up with my spirit. My flesh was lagging behind because I'm having a midlife crisis. I don't want a sports car. I just want a double cheeseburger. So I'm just saying this because, you know, uh, uh, I've lost 10 pounds. I want to feel better. I want to do better. I want to be a mean, lean preaching machine. I want to bring it. You know what I mean? And, uh, and so um, that's what it's all about, though. All I had to do was just clean myself out. Now I can think, think clearly. I sleep better. And all these things are happening. Amen? David and Cher Orca, my inspiration. Amen? We've got to take care of our bodies. Some of you, that, you've got to think about that. I mean, for those of you that did the Daniel, I was thinking about You haven't had sugar in three weeks. At least what we know. I mean, I'm just saying. I don't know. I mean, I'm hoping, but haven't had dairy in three weeks. Haven't had meat in three weeks. Haven't had coffee in three weeks, right? See, you can deny yourself. You can do it. You can do it. So this is what's happening is chapter 3. We saw the condition. We saw what's happening, and, and the future is now. Let's go to Hosea chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. Here we go. Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel, for the Lord hath a controversy with the inhabitants of the land because there is no truth, nor mercy, nor knowledge of God in the land. By swearing and lying and killing and stealing and committing adultery, they break out and blood toucheth blood. Well, that condition is not good at all, is it? Those two verses pretty much sum it all up, right? There's a lot of bad stuff happening, isn't there? Say amen. He's got a controversy. You got to be, remember, Amos, Hosea, and Jonah are the three prophets that were written to the northern kingdom specifically. Jonah, Amos, and Hosea. Remember, Amos came to them and challenged them. He was from the tribe of Judah. He came from south and went up north. Remember, Amos challenged them and says, what are you guys doing up here? Don't you remember only, 
you made an agreement with the Lord. How can two walk together unless they be agreed? You made an agreement. You're, you're backing out of this agreement. You're not keeping the agreement. And they shunned him. Get out of here. Go back to your sycamore trees or whatever it was. Amen? So we've already discovered that the feast days have been restored. They were taken away, but they've been restored. Amen? What about the Torah? Has that been restored? Let's look at Hosea 4, 6. Let's read it. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me. Seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. How many have heard this verse in the church? We say it all the time. Just like the one in Hebrews 10. Don't forsake this summoned together, some have. Like every time the church doors are open, you're supposed to be there. No, you got more important things to do. We're commanded to come together for Shabbat and New Moon. Torah studies are optional, but we are commanded to come together on Shabbat. It's, it's a convocation, a mikra. So here we have this. And the cool thing is, for some of you, thank you, Holy Spirit, some of you have gotten into Torah and your children are adults now. Let me tell you something. When you get into Torah, God will remember your children. I don't want to hear this, well, I didn't raise them up this way. They didn't get Torah. They, they, you know, I'm, I'm 50 years old, and I'm getting Torah as a grandma or a granddad, and my kids didn't have it. The promise is still to you and your children. It simply means if you stay in Torah, your children will come into Torah. It's in their DNA. It's in them. It just hasn't manifested. I'm telling you right now, they're just looking at mom and dad, thinking mommy and daddy's gone tutti-frutti on me. You know, they did all these little crazy things that throughout life. Now they're into like Hebrew roots. Yeah, this will blow over, but you're still in it. We just wait for them. I had a vision of sons and daughters filling this whole front. The children are coming home. Mark my words. And we won't say a word because the presence of God will bring them in to the altar. That's why we made the altar long and big because the sons and daughters are coming home. I have hope in that. I know it. I know it. I know it. It's already happening. There's a lot of families being restored. Amen? So would you agree that the feasts have been restored in the Torah? Why? We acknowledge the Torah. We have knowledge of the Torah now. We acknowledge it. Isn't that cool? These are specific things, people. Hosea chapter 4, verses 16 and 17. For Israel slideth back as a backsliding heifer. Now the Lord will feed them as a lamb in a large place. Ephraim is joined to idols. Let him alone. Let him alone. This word backsliding is the Hebrew word sarar. It's number 5637 in the Strong's Concordance. It means to turn away, rebellious, revolter, a verb meaning to be stubborn. A verb meaning to be stubborn. Are you stubborn? I'm stubborn. Listen, people think Michael Jackson's moonwalking is cool. That's a form of backsliding. <laughs> Isn't that the coolest thing? No, he's going backwards. I want to see him moonwalk forward. No. I don't know. You guys laugh. This, this movement needs a comedian, right? <laughs> the nerve of that guy. <laughs> Did you hear what he said? It's true, right? Gosh, he, he preaches the word, but he, he's funny. He made me laugh, and then I cried. That's what I do. God reveals himself, and I go, <laughs> oh, it's me. Here we go, Hosea chapter 5, verses 3 and 4. Here's the condition. I know Ephraim and Israel is not hid from me. For now, O Ephraim, thou committest whoredom, and Israel is defiled. They will not frame their doings to turn unto their God, for the spirit of whoredoms is in the midst of them, and they have not known the Lord. They talk about the lost tribes. They're not lost. God knows where they're at. Amen? He knows where they're at. 
Once again, the whole house of Israel is made up of Jews and non-Jews, for those of you that are new. There's wild branches and there's natural branches. There's a place for everyone. How many of you understand that? That's biblical, folks. It's biblical. You're drawn to the things that are Jewish, but you're not Jewish. People would say to me, Pastor, you're just trying to be Jewish. I said, thank you. But I'm not. My Savior's Jewish. I'm a wild branch. That's all I can say. I love this. Continuing on, Hosea chapter 5, verses 11 and 12. Here's the judgment. For I am as oppressed and broken in judgment because he willingly walked after the commandment. Therefore will I be unto Ephraim as a moth and to the house of Judah as rottenness. Well, wait a minute, he's following the commandment. This particular word is zav. It's number 6673 in the Strong's Concordance. It's not the Torah or teachings and instructions. It means an injunction, an injunction or precept. In the Amplified, it says man's command, which simply means vanities, filth, secular precepts. That's what they were doing. In the complete Jewish Bible, it says they follow or walk after futility. Futile, futility. How many of that doesn't get you anywhere? Vanities, filth, secular precepts will not get you anywhere in the kingdom of God. Are you ready? Hosea 5.15, the future. I will go and return to my place till they acknowledge their offense and seek my face in their affliction. They will seek me early. It's a prophecy. So there's coming a time when this is going to take place. In their affliction, they will seek me early. See, we've been taught certain eschatology, but we need to rethink eschatology because I'm telling you, it's an opportunity. Life is an opportunity to be in the redemptive plan of God. It's not a circumstance and this and that. No, it's an opportunity. And even if it's tough, it's good because it's great because he's bringing you to it. And if he brings you to it, he'll bring you through it. You can sit on your blessed assurance or you can pursue God. People in the Bible pursued God and they got somewhere. Abraham's sitting in his tent. He sees guests. He runs out to meet them. He didn't hide behind the couch, turn the lights off, lock the door. We're not home. Did you enjoy that? That's what we do. You know, it's some of you do. That's why I'm not coming to your house. I'd be like, I know you're in there. I see two of them behind the couch through the blinds. I see your legs sticking out. The pastor. How about Hosea chapter 6, verses 1 through 3? Oh, this is like, this is like having a buffet with God. This is such an honor. Here's the present. You ready? Come and let us return unto the Lord, for he hath torn and he will heal us. He hath smitten and he will bind us up. After two days will he revive us. In the third day he will raise us up and we shall live in his sight. Stop right there. What? After two days he will revive us? Remember what Moses said in Psalm 90 verse 4. A day is to the Lord is a thousand years. A thousand years is as one day. We serve a timeless God. 2 Peter 3.8 quotes Moses. A day is to the Lord is a thousand years. A thousand years is this one day. And Peter says, don't let this escape you. You must understand this. This is why the Hebrews of the Christian faith took off in the 1980s till now. It's because it's been two days since his, his death, burial, and resurrection. 2,000 years. Why did we have to go 2,000 years? Because we had to be scattered and we needed the gospel to go out in those 2,000 years. But now because of the, the World Wide Web and Internet and technology, the gospel has gone to all places of the earth, even among the missionaries. Amen? But on the third day, he will raise us up and we shall live in his sight. It's got that three is divine of the Lord. Three days and nights in the tomb, amen. Continuing on, Hosea 6, 3, the present. Here we go. Then shall we know if we follow on to know the Lord, his going forth is prepared as the morning, and he shall come unto us as the rain, as the latter and former rain unto the earth. Yeshua came to us like the rain, the early and former or latter rain. 
When you plant the seeds in late fall, you have to have moisture, water. That's why you have the lulaf. That's why they did the water libation and all that ceremony, because they needed rain for their crops. What did Yeshua say? Unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, there's your early rain. The latter rain comes when what? In the spring, when he died. And now the rain comes on the crops for the harvest, for the barley and the wheat. Isn't that amazing? He will come to us as the early and latter rain. See, it's all about him, amen? Man, this is good stuff. Continuing on in Hosea 6.6, 6, I'm, I'm trucking now. For I desired mercy and not sacrifice and the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. This was their condition. What does God want? Are you giving each other mercy? The knowledge of God, what he wants, what he demands, more than burnt offerings. So you can go through the motions, you know. I, I was sharing with Adaya um, this, this morning about church. I said, Adaya, listen, when we go to church, we all love Jesus. We want to worship him. We're going to go to church. We're going to, we're going to have a service together. We're going to enjoy him together. And we're going to tell God how much we love him. And that's what church is about. And did you understand? She goes, yes, sir. Because it's true. I'm not here because I'm a pastor. I'm not here because I'm into Hebrew roots. I'm here because of Jesus. He changed my life. He gave me my Hebrew roots. He's the root of the olive tree. So when people challenge me, how can you be Israel? I say, tell the Son of God that I'm not. He died so that I could, I could be an Israelite. He died so that I could be grafted in. He died so that I could be part of his plan, even though I'm not Jewish. I come alongside. I'm a part of it. It's a part of the plan, folks. Hosea 7.8. Ephraim, he hath mixed himself among the people. Ephraim is a cake not churned. Some of you are half-baked. Amen. I'm telling you, I was in the grocery store the other day, and I was looking over the ice cream. I saw Ben and Jerry's. It literally said half-baked. I said, man, that's going to sell out. Ephraim's going to buy all that up. You ever cooked a pancake on one side, and the other side's not really quite done? You, you just bit into that, and you're like, ah, ah, put that back on the griddle. Man, you ain't half-baked. So what does that mean? You know, you're just not done yet. God's flipping us over to the other side. You want to jump out of the skillet. Hey, I'm done. No, you're a drippy pancake. Half-baked, half-cocked. You laugh, it's true. He uses these terms, and Ephraim is a cake not churned. You know if you don't churn it over, it's not going to be, it's going to be burnt on one side. That's Florida. We're burnt on one side, liquidy on the other because we live in Florida. That's a condition, isn't it? How about Hosea 8.8? 8? We're cruising now. Israel is swallowed up. Now shall, they, now shall they be among the Gentiles as a vessel wherein is no pleasure. They just don't, they don't fit in. They don't, they're, just, they're just a vessel like everybody else. They're not standing out. It's called lost identity, amen? You're just among the nations. You're like everybody else. How many of you know when you wrote Torah in your minds and your hearts, it changed your life? People responded differently to you after that, didn't they? They responded differently to you after that. You thought they responded in negative connotation and became born again. We're going 70, 75. You like that? Come on, I'm teaching the whole book of Hosea, bro. Help me out here. All right. Hosea 8, 12. Let's read it. I have written to him the great things of my law, but they were counted as a strange thing. Torah. Torah is not strange to you anymore, is it? All right, let's reflect. Let's go back. The good teacher is going to take you back. Did he take the feasts away? Are you currently in the feasts? Say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Did we, did, did we not have Torah? It was a strange thing. Now we have Torah. Thank you, Lord. That's proof that these scriptures are coming to pass that you're following Torah and you're not Jewish. There's no other explanation. See, the problem with the Jewish people is they'll read the Torah, Talmud, Mishnah, all that, but they're not reading the prophets like we are. But guess what? The Jews are reading the prophets now. They're like, man, the prophets already foretold that these people would come out of the nations and this is going down. They're, we have to accept them. That's why they shake up in the government of Israel. I think this is a good thing. I think that's going to really help us, to be honest with you. I really do. I, 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 got, I, I feel good about it. 
You say Torah, and people think, what, some kamikaze pilot from Japan? <laughs> Torah, Torah. No, no, man, it's the book. Five books of the Bible. Some Japanese dish or something. Oh, Torah, Torah. No, man, it's a book, okay? It's five books. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, you know. But if you're not careful, you could become that Torah kamikaze pilot, you know, <laughs> with Torah. Mm. Now, God is so awesome. Listen, why do you do what you do, Will? Why do you do it? Why do you keep the feast and the Torah? Why, why, why are you so different? Why are you doing this? Did you get this in a magazine? Did your dad teach you this? You ready for the next one? Look at Hosea 9.3. They shall not dwell in the Lord's land, but Ephraim shall return to Egypt, and they shall eat unclean things in Assyria. The dietary laws. How many of you follow Leviticus 11 dietary laws? Raise your hand. You follow the, the Leviticus 11. Clean and unclean meats. That's, that's it. What, what are you doing that for? You know you can just bless it in Jesus' name. Eat whatever you want. What are you doing? Eat whatever you want. Bless it. Jesus' name. Those pickled pig's feet in Jesus' name. <laughs> You know, my grandmother's Hungarian. She ate pickled pig's feet. I could never understand. It creeped me out, man. You know how your grandparents have like this basement and they have food down the basement and stuff? I'm going down the basement, you know, and I see these pickled pig's feet going down the staircase. Oh! You don't eat that, man. That pig will never walk again. What are you doing, man? It's like a rabbit's foot. That rabbit's hopping around because of you. Wasn't lucky for him. Got my lucky rabbit. It's fine. Poor, poor rabbit, you know. I got a rabbit. That rabbit's probably looking for you. Isn't this enjoyable? Listen, when you know what you know to know, it's nice to know. No, it is. When people, you don't just do things to do things like, you know, why do you do that? I don't know. I don't know why I do that. I've had this habit for years. I don't know why I do it, you know. But it's like, it's to confirm God's word. And when you discover it and you do it with everybody else, it brings comfort. i got to move on. Hosea 9, 7. The days of visitation are come. The days of recompense are come. Israel shall know it. The prophet is a fool. The spiritual man is mad for the multitude of thine iniquity and the great hatred. That's judgment, is it not? It's judgment. In hindsight, we can see that. We know that God is a righteous judge. He's going to judge again. Let's move on. Hosea 9, verses 8 and 9, the condition. The watchman of Ephraim was with my God, but the prophet is a snare of a fowler and all his ways and hatred in the house of his God. They have deeply corrupted themselves as in the days of Gibeah. Therefore, he will remember their iniquity. He will visit their sins. Did he not do that? Judgment. The watchman of Ephraim was with my God. Ephraim is a watchman. Jeremiah 3, 31, 6 talks about the watchman. It's Natsar. This means to guard or protect. So I'm here to protect you, to guard you, to help you, to, to navigate these last days. Amen? The watchman of Ephraim was with my God. He was a watchman at one time. Joshua was an Ephraimite who took the people into the promised land. He was a watchman. Ephraim today is ignorant, immature, irresponsible, and mean. The watchman has a heart after God and after people. Hosea 9, 17. My God will cast them away because they did not hearken unto him, and they shall be wanderers among the nations. That's the judgment I put on here. A lot of Ephraim are still wandering today. We call this church hopping. I'm going to go home. I'm going to go here. I'm going to go there. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. I love what John Bevere said in the book of Romans. I don't have it right here. But he said, basically says that God puts the members where he wants. What are you saying, Pastor Nick? That simply means that God tells you where to go to church. Anybody that tells me, oh, God said don't go to church. Don't be among the people. You're a liar. You're not hearing from God. You're deluded. You are deluded. You know how many people would love to have a Beit Tehillah like this? Yeah. 
in Maine or, or whatever, these places that have small population, small groups of people, just two families like Norway. Can you imagine Beit Tehillah, Oslo? And we just slouch and leave and come in late and go home early and, and we don't care. We just, you know, this purple chair is nice. People are crying out for Beit Tehillah. We get emails, phone calls. Is there a Beit Tehillah here or there? I said, no, we're the only one. It's like a franchise. We have Beit Tehillah, Iowa. Don't get me wrong, but I'm saying that it's just not branching out very much because we're a remnant. I'm saying this from my heart. You know, I didn't ask for this job or this position, but God gave it to me. But I'm going to assure you of this. This is God's house. I fear him. And he's going to get what he wants. It's like I'm Esther and he's Mordecai. You know what I'm saying? I don't want somebody else getting my gig. You know what I'm saying? I got it. I love it. I want it. I can do this thing. Because I want to know why I'm called to do certain things. I want to know. Because I'm the wanderer. Because I'm the wanderer. Well, get out of that. Get out of that. Don't come in here and be negative. Come in here and be positive. Come in here to give something, not get something. Come in here to give something, not get something. Amen? That's what I do. I don't sit in the front row and pick the service apart and this and that. Where's she at? Where's he at? We got a lot of people dropping out sick. All kinds of stuff's happening. This, we're still going to have a service. I don't know what's going on. I don't know why that person didn't show up. I don't know why that person's not there. I can't worry about that, right? We'll deal with that later. We're moving on now. We only have 14 chapters. We're going to go to chapter 10 right now. Hosea chapter 10, verse 2. Here's the condition. Their heart is divided. Now shall they be found faulty. He shall break down their altars. He shall spoil their images. Their heart is divided. Their heart is divided. You know, I love college football. I like to watch college football. I just got to that age where I like college football. I like the team sport. I like watching it. And it's on Saturday. And then God says, cut your cable. I can't even record games now. If I'm going to watch a game, it's like rabbit ears. and They don't even work right. And i got to be right on time. Got to be in front of the TV. There's no recording. No rewind. You know, little Eva distracts me. A touchdown score. Well, Eva, the touchdown. Can't go back. Right? It's because I want to put God first. There's nothing wrong with pleasure, everyone. Movies and music and TV. But I'm telling you, put God first, though. I get jacked up for prayer, Torah studies, the service. I, there's nothing I want more than to be at these services, man. You know, and I'm telling you, it's incredible. But the day comes, see, where something creeps in, like, oh, I'm going to miss Monday. I think I'm just going to go to the gym. Hey, I'm doing good. No, my butt needs to be here praying 10 to 12. And for all you that are in the prayer ministry, praise God for you because we're going to make a difference. We're two or more gathered in his name. There he is in the midst. And that means to establish things, too. Because you've got to establish things with two or more people. You know that, right? So think about it. Let's continue on here. There's good stuff happening. Don't let your heart be divided. Hosea chapter 10, verses 11 and 12. Let's read it. And Ephraim is an heifer that is taught and loveth to tread out the corn, but I passed over upon her fair neck. I will make Ephraim to ride. Judah shall plow, and Jacob shall break his clods. We're simply going to straighten out what Judah has already done. Does everybody see that? Judah has the scepter. Judah goes before us, like going back to the land and, and growing all this vegetation and, and building a, a, an incredible country, a nation of Israel. How many know what I'm talking about? Do you see where Ephraim and Judah are coming together? Do you see it? Do you see it? Yes. Thank you. we got to ask ourselves, who's Ephraim and who's Judah? If we don't have Jewish people in our life, we're not fulfilling these scriptures. It doesn't say the Jews have to have Jesus in order for this to happen. we got to have all these requirements. How we have mistreated the Jewish people. Oh, you have to have Jesus. You have to have Jesus. You have to have Jesus. And what's, what a hypocrite we are. Our own family doesn't have Jesus. Your co-workers don't have Jesus. When we put that on them, you got to have Jesus. What about the other people? What about your family members? What about your siblings? Do they have Jesus? No. Why do you treat the Jews differently? That's what the Lord said to me. Why do you treat them differently? They're blinded. I blinded them. I'm speaking out of my own personal experiences, in the land and out of the land, among the Jewish people, away from the Jewish people. I'm just speaking my own experiences with the Lord. It's just like when Peter was told, hey, man, hang out with the Gentiles. It's okay. It's cool. 
Remember what he was doing? The Jews would show up, he'd be with Gentiles, he would get up from the table and try to hide himself. And Paul rebuked him, says, why are you doing that? Why are you treating them different? Here we go. Hosea chapter 10, 12. Sow to yourselves in righteousness, reap in mercy, break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord till he come and rain righteousness upon you. For I am in Judah. Amen? It's time to seek the Lord. Hosea 11.1, 1, you're doing good, folks. You're going to graduate. Hosea University. Hosea 11.1, 1, let's read it. When Israel was a child, then I loved him and called my son out of Egypt. This is a messianic prophecy as well with Yeshua, is it not? Are you familiar with that? Let Scripture interpret Scripture. Do the cross-references. Let's read that in Matthew 2.15. And was there until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt have I called my son. Is that Yeshua? Did Yeshua come through the homo sapien race? Did Yeshua become human? Yes. He, he, he fulfilled everything. And he had to go down to Egypt and come out of Egypt too, just like the children of Israel. You're going to see a lot of interesting things. And, and, and thank you, Holy Spirit. Even in times of reflection here, think about it. Did he not have to go into the wilderness for 40 days? Right? And, and he fasted? And he was tempted? Was he not? But he said to Satan, it is written, it is written, it is written. This is what I tell my pastor friends. This is what I tell the evangelicals. This is what I tell Christians around me or people around me. Hey, the Bible says... And I believe it. Now, they don't believe it. That's fine. The, the Word of God says, and this is what I'm doing today with this teaching, God's Word says. This is not a cult of personality. You're not following me. You're following Him. You're following Him. Think about it. See, you need to build up your resistance, then you can pass the temptations. See, when you stumble and fall all the time, just build your resistance up. Get better. Like, man, I haven't done that in two weeks, or I haven't done that in a month, or I haven't done that in six months, you know? But build up your resistance to it. And before you know it, you'll be set free. Amen? Never okay sin. Sin is sin, period. Hosea chapter 11, verses 8 and 9. Look at this, his, his heart, God's heart. How shall I give thee up, Ephraim? How shall I deliver thee, Israel? How shall I make thee as Adma? How shall I set thee as Zeboim? Mine heart is turned within me. My repentings are kindled together. Keep reading. I will not execute the fierceness of, fierceness of my anger. I will not return to destroy Ephraim, for I am God and not man, the Holy One in the midst of thee, and I will not enter into the city. He's basically saying, I'm not going to make an end of you. I'm not going to wipe you out, Ephraim. I'm not going to wipe you out. There's the condition I have to judge you, but I'm not going to wipe you out. Amen? Isn't that powerful? You can find this in Jeremiah chapter 31, verses 18 through 22, God's mercy on Ephraim. See, that's why you're here, everyone. He's given you mercy to be here to receive this message. You've made it. You made it this far. You've made it through so many things, and he wants you to give the mercy back to those around you. He's reminding me of that time and time again. And I always remember, when you see somebody doing something, you're doing this, remember, you used to do the same things. Mercy. Are you ready for some more? Yeah, you are. You diehards. Hosea 11.10, let's read it. They shall walk after the Lord. He shall roar like a lion. When he shall roar, then the children shall tremble from the west. Where are we? We're west. How many prophecies have I given you? Wow, I could add a V8. I don't know if that's Daniel Fast approved. Somebody tell me if it is because I'm going to drink one. It is? Daniel Fast approved VA juice? Man. Okay. Man. Guess I'll just drink some more water. <laughs> so boring. There's no flavor. That's what my kids tell me. There's nothing to drink. I said, man, there's water. I don't want water. 
but it's well water. <laughs> the United States of America is west. I mean, think about it. How many Ephraimites are to the west of this world, man? Canada, Mexico. If you ever get a chance, check out what Pastor Russell did in the media on our YouTube channel. Like India's getting their Hebrew roots, Mexico's getting their Hebrew roots. Thousands of hits. England's getting their Hebrew roots. I mean, India, Mexico. I mean, it's happening all over the world. Isn't it exciting? I'm telling you, this is so cool. Here we go. Hosea 12, 8. You're in chapter 12, folks. And Ephraim said, yet I have become rich. I have found me out substance. In all my labors, they shall find none iniquity in me that were sin. Really? Haughty, prideful, arrogant. I didn't share that verse, but there's a verse early on in Hosea. It basically talks about, I've given you wealth, I've given you provision, and you used it for bail. So when you see people, think you think they're blessed and they have all these things, it doesn't mean they're right with God. So he even loves us so much that he'll take care of us even when we're giving it to things we shouldn't. That's a good God. That's a good God. That's a good God. Hosea 12, 9. And I that am the Lord thy God from the land of Egypt will yet make thee to dwell in tabernacles as the days of the solemn feast. I'm going to cause you to celebrate tabernacles again. Build sukkahs. How many of you build sukkahs now? Prophecy fulfilled. Now, this could have a near or far fulfillment. You know what I mean? Maybe we're out in the wilderness and we've got to build a lean-to or something. I don't know. But I know that first year that we were here, he showed me this verse because we didn't have a certificate of occupancy to go into the fellowship hall, we had to literally put up a tent and meet in the tent before we can go into the fellowship hall. If I'm not mistaken, it was 2002. I'll have to do some research. But yeah, we, we couldn't even meet in the building. Certificate of occupancy, we didn't have that. So we had to put a tent up. And guess what? It was tabernacles. It was the time of tabernacles. Coincidence? I don't think so. How many remember the tent? Let's, let's show a picture of that. It's just, it's not our, it's just a picture of a sukkah, somebody building a sukkah. Pretty cool, huh? All right, Hosea 13, 9. Let's keep moving here. You guys are doing so good. Two more chapters. And then sundown's coming. Right, Eddie? Sundown, you better take care. <laughs> For me, it's midnight. Why did I do this? <laughs> People ask me all the time, oh, you must be breaking the fast at, at sundown. I'm like, no, man, I'm, I'm Greek. I stretch this thing out till midnight. So guess what? I got to wait till midnight, right? You can't go in, right, a Greek and end up a Hebrew. It doesn't work like that. If you start out a Greek, you're a Greek, right? If you're going midnight, you got to go to midnight. That's just the Pharisee in me. I'm sorry. All right, Hosea 13, 9. We're cruising now. O Israel, thou hast destroyed thyself, but in me is thine help. Didn't we hear that? Didn't we hear that from Giovanni? What is Giovanni saying about boxing and, and, and having fear and not believing in himself? What did he say? You're my strength. You're my strength. Listen, there's no way I could be married for 20 years, have seven kids, and hang out with you guys without Jesus. I'm telling you, I can't do this job. No, seriously, you guys are too much. It's like me on steroids with all of you. I mean, it's tough. You guys are tough. And I know what Moses did. I'm like, Lord, those are your people that made the healing. Those are your people. I do. I, I, and I never thought I would come to that place. I go, what is Moses doing? Just lead the people. And, and, and you know, he's like, suck it up, buttercup, from the cloud of witnesses up there. Suck it up, buttercup. What do you got, 150? Why don't you try two and a half million people? That complaint department was out the door, around the rock pile. Hosea 13, 14, here's a good thing. Here's the future. I will ransom them from the power of the grave. I will redeem them from death. O death, I will be thy plagues. O grave, I will be thy destruction. Repentance shall be hid from mine eyes. Is that a prophecy? I will ransom them from the power of the grave? Yeah, we're going to die but we have the resurrection power in Jesus. So look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 54 through 56. So Paul is quoting Hosea. Look at what he says. 
So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Keep going. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law. The charge is against us to bring about that death. Is that good? You know, this particular uh, portion of Scripture, Hosea 13, 14, is a half Torah, actually. Uh, Jacob departed is the Torah portion. That's when Pastor Randy died. Jacob departed. That's the Torah portion. It's when Jacob was going to go and get his inheritance finally. The half Torah for that particular Torah portion, I don't have it, is this reference. Yep, Hosea 13, 14. Very interesting, isn't it? Continuing on here. So that's the future. The future is now. Say the future is now. I don't have to be afraid of death. Right? I figured he's going to keep me alive if I have, keep having more kids with my wife and have all of you. I got work to do. I can't be idle. Right? Hosea chapter 14, you are in the last chapter, folks. You want to finish? Are you a finisher? Yeah, you are. Hosea 14, 1 and 2, let's read it. O Israel, return unto the Lord thy God, for thou hast fallen by thine iniquity. Take with you words and turn to the Lord. Say unto him, take away all iniquity and receive us graciously. So will we render the calves of our lips. What's devarim? What's that mean? Words? So the words return and churn are words describing teshuva. Teshuva. Do you guys see that? See, the Daniel fast is a big deal. And I commend all of you that did it. We're going to do it every year. This is the structure. This is the way it's set up to prepare us for the fall feast because it's a mikra. It's a rehearsal for what he's going to do in the future. We keep doing it, and we teach our children. Does everybody understand that? But this word return and churn is the word shuv. Amen? It means to turn, call to mind, recover, restore, retrieve. Listen, the Messiah can't come back until the restitution of all things. That means his Torah, his people, his land, the city. These all have to be restored before the Messiah can come back. Does everybody understand that? Take with you words, meaning his words, the words of the Torah. The Torah says this, the Torah says that. We're always trying to get the word to attain to us. No, we attain to his word. If his word says that that is a sin, then that is a sin. Hosea 14.4. I will heal their backsliding. I will love them freely, for mine anger is turned away from him. Let me tell you something. If you can learn anything, God is not mad at you. Can he be upset or disappointed? Absolutely. I always say fall forward. Stumble forward. Don't go by your emotions. You're not feeling well. You've got a bad attitude. You just want, you're just all jacked up. Just come in here anyway. Why be at home and be all jacked up and angry? Come in here. We'll put you in a corner or something. We'll, fi we'll figure it out. Right? I was telling my wife how amazed it is that I always get to be here with you. He's protected me. He's given me pretty much good health and stuff. Not that I can't get sick or something happened to me, but when have I ever missed? It's a miracle. I'm telling all of you this because I want to be here. So he lets me be here. You only need one reason to be here. Be here. I come with a thousand reasons. My wife's like, we're going to get all these boxes still in our house. She's like, what are we going to do about these boxes? I said, I don't know. Jesus is coming. I mean, maybe he can help us. We got all these boxes. What do you want me to do? I got to go to church, right? It's true, though. Got to have a priority, right? Hosea 14, 8. Here's the future. Ephraim shall say, what have I to do any more with idols? I have heard him and observed him. I am like a green fir tree. From me is thy fruit found. Do you see that? A lot of things can be idolatry. Food can be idolatry. College football can be idolatry. Sports can be idolatry. Shopping can be idolatry, ladies. It can be. 
I was talking with a pastor friend of mine. He loves shirts. He'd always buy shirts. But he would just have a whole slew of shirts, even though he would go to Goodwill. He realized, man, I, I, I got idolatry. I'm all into shirts. I got to have all these shirts. He realized, you know, isn't that funny how we just come up with little things? Like Amelo Marcus, right, from the Philippines, remember? All the shoes. Do you remember that? Do you really need all those shoes? You only got two feet. I mean, I mean, are you switching them out every other day? What are you doing? I mean, all right, listen, this is the last verse. This is the last verse. Are you ready? I heard a hallelujah. Thank you, Joanne. She's like, I need to practice for the feast days. Get him out of here. They get out the shepherd's crook and I'm dodging it. You know, they can't get me. See, that's why I used to go up there, but they got a trap floor. Uh, that that kind of hurt my back. But anyway, Hosea 14, 9, this is it. Who is wise and he shall understand these things, Beit Tehillah, prudent and he shall know them for the ways of the Lord are right and the just shall walk in them, but the transgressors shall fall therein. Boy. Selah, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There it is. Last thought here. Talking about Ephraim and Judah. My testimony. I have this stick. And I know how to use it, folks. It's not for those that are here. It's for those that are not here. Walk softly, but carry a big stick, folks. I'm telling you this story real quick in closing because I think it's important because how do we overcome him? By the blood of the lamb and the words of our testimony. Before I met the Dreyer family, I used to be much more fit. I had more hair. And I used to run. I like to run. So it's about the 90s. It's like 1993, 94, going back that far. So I'm having this cool down cycle and I used to live at Bloomingdale Woods Apartments and over there, you know where it's at. It's on Bloomingdale. <laughs> and I was having a cool down cycle, and I started just trying to trot in a little bit, just started walking. And this, this stick was in the path, and I literally put my foot under it and went like that and threw it out of the path and kept walking. And the Holy Spirit's like, go get that stick. I'm like, what am I, a dog? <laughs> go get it, boy, go get it. And I'm like, go get the stick. I mean, I could hear it like almost like it was audible, like, Go get the stick. All right. So I get the stick. He goes, all right, take it home. Take it home with you. I mean, it's a cheap pet, right? I mean, that's a good boy. <laughs> I'm not feeding you ever. So I kid you not. So I go into my apartment complex, and I go in my apartment door, and I put the stick right there where you go in the door, and I put it right there. I just leave it there. So I'm seeing it all the time. I'm coming in. I don't, I don't mess with the stick. I'm just, I just know I'm supposed to get the stick. No one took it. Maintenance never took it. Lawn people, neighbors, nobody touched the stick for a few months. I don't know exactly. It was, it was a few months, at least, at, least, at least a couple months. Next thing I know, I run into the Dreyer family. So back in spring of 95, let's say, they start sharing with me about Ephraim and Judah and the feast days. And I celebrated my, fast, my first Passover in uh, 1995 in the spring with Bati and Angus Wooten and the Dryers in a fellowship hall. It used to be Valrico New Life Church. It's, it's now another church. But anyway, in the fellowship hall, we celebrated the, uh, the uh, Passover there. My first Passover, my first feast day. So I go home after having this conversation with them and everything. And I see the stick. And the Holy Spirit said, you're Ephraim. That stick represents you. You're Ephraim. Now, I know there's a lot of controversy, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm talking live streaming right now. This is going out into the, you know, international world, the society. I don't care. I know who I am. I'm Ephraim. And I love Judah, and I love the Jewish people. I'm a Christian with Torah. And I love Jesus, and I hold to the Christian doctrine, but I'm a Christian with Torah, and I know that I'm a wild branch, and I love the story of Ruth, right? Because she heads up our prayer meetings. I love it. It's always a good story. And even Rahab was a harlot, and she was grafted in. 
you know, and, and even on the Land of Israel Network, when you listen to these podcasts, I can't tell you enough. If you want another perspective, if you want another perspective of the Torah or, or what's going on in Israel or what's the relationship like between Orthodox Jews and us, listen to the Land of Israel Network podcasts. You're in your car anyway. You're in traffic. Listen. Find out what's going on. Their modern-day Orthodox Jews are extending a hand to us as Christians because we have come out of the nations and we have Torah. They are fascinated by us. They accept us for who we are in our faith with a mutual respect. So all I'm saying is enjoy the ride. Enjoy the ride. Enjoy the ride. You can't contest God's word. How many of you are reading the Bible and you're like, what's this about? What, why is this saying this? Because you can't say the Old Testament's for the Jews and the New Testament's for the Christians. No, it's God's redemptive plan being unfolded through a progressive revelation right before our very eyes. Amen? So there you have it. Hosea is about returning, a people returning. We are those people. Now, Christian Zionists will root for the Jews. They'll pray for the peace of Jerusalem, but they have no intention of living there, moving there, or whatever that is. We got a horse in the race. We got a horse in the race. And it makes sense now when you read these, these half Torahs in Deuteronomy. It's amazing. It says in there through Isaiah that the divorced wife has more kids than the one that's married. Duh. That's Beit Tehillah. That's us. It says it. Where's your divorce? He says, where's your writ of divorce? I've absolved that through my son Yeshua, right? Because you're bound by the law as long as he lives. You can't take her back. If your wife goes off to be, and gets a divorce and marries another man, she can't come back to the original husband, right? You've been given a writ of divorce. You can't do it in the spiritual laws. What has to happen? Someone has to die. So God couldn't go against the spiritual laws. He loved us so much. He could have taken the easy way out, snapped his fingers like Thanos. But he's not, he's not a compromiser. He's a real God. He's true. He's love. And he loves you. And I've been in my prayer closet, and I say things, maybe it's not true, maybe it's my idea, maybe it's something I'm thinking about, but the thing that got me the most was this. God, he created so many things and done all of this, and then what happened is there's this rebellion in heaven with one-third of the angels. There was a void. God said, I'm going to make something in my image. Enough of these angels, enough of these hobbits, enough of Neph Nephilim. No, no, I'm making something my image. And they're going to want to praise me. They're not going to turn on me, these, the ones that I create. They're not going to do that. They're going to, they're going to want to be with me and worship me. And I don't have to worry about whether they're going to stab me in the back or steal my glory. I'm not going to worry about that because they won't do that. That's who we are. So if you don't think worship is important, you have been tricked because Satan was a worshiper says he has pipes, timbrels. He's got nine stones. See, he's three stones short of a breastplate. He was beautiful. He was the chief, chief angel above Michael the archangel, above Gabriel. He was the man or the angel that was, he was like, he was it. And he was responsible to make sure that God got the glory. Does everybody understand that? Pride is an awful, awful thing. Pride comes before a fall. And we need to be praying for Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu because I think he's overstepped his position. And there's going to be a there's going to be a change. Amen. A lot of kings in the Bible started out good. Power corrupts us. They become strong in their heart. Like Uzziah, great restorer. He stormed into the priesthood and the temple says, I'm going to do the incense. I'm the king. He got struck with leprosy. If you go back and read the scriptures, he fought his way through 80 priests to do the incense. They tried to hold him back. He was so adamant that he had to have it this way. He died a leper. 
That's why in this movement, we have to walk with humility. Respect people's will. Respect the way people worship. Respect other religions, amen? You work out your faith. You fear God because you're going after the gold. You're going after first place. This is personal. This is between you and God. God wrestles with me, man, you know? He scolded me a while back ago. He's like, look at you. Your husband and your father and you're the pastor. He says, that's all well and good. He said, I want my son back. He wants me. I don't go to him as a pastor, husband, and father. I go to my father as a son. See, my dad worked all the time. He worked double jobs to provide for us. He loved us. He would show affection. But my dad wasn't there. He was absent. My mother abandoned us. So I'm like, Mowgli, put me with the wolves. No discredit to them. I love my parents. I just found out this last, on the Day of Atonement, I found out, on the Day of Atonement, I found out my mother passed away in 2002, the same year as Pastor Randy. And I thought she was still alive. In the Living Years, like Mike and the Mechanics, it's a great song. Tell people you love them now. In the Living Years, do something. Don't wait for them to be dead or to die. So you're seeing a pastor in progress. I'm just like you. I'm just as messed up. I just lead you. So I'm trying to work through stuff. I'm 52 years old. Mother abandoned me. She was going to abort me. My dad stopped her at the abortion clinic door, and that's when the trauma set in. But she had me. Thank God. And I have a brother that's 13 months younger. That's a praise report. But see, when you're growing up and you don't have a mother and your dad's not around, how are you supposed to figure out parenthood? That's why I struggle as, as, as a, even a husband or a father. I, I would struggle probably more as a father because like, what do you, you want to do what's right, but where's your model? We don't have one. We never had one. So what do you do? You try to just wing it. And then we call dysfunction parenthood. Things we shouldn't be doing, we're doing. We say, no, the kids shouldn't be able to get away with that. No. But that's the prophecy. It even says, women and children will rule over you because the divine order is so broken. So, men, you're good enough. God loves you, and you can do it. You can do it. You can see what's happening in the earth today, folks. Be careful with social media, television, music, movies, and stuff, because I'm telling you, we're being brainwashed. They're trying to rewire you. That's why there's a falling away from the church and the faith. The church is not growing. It is dying. Don't be fooled. It's entertainment. It's a 30-minute service. I'm still parking my car for 30 minutes. Seriously. That's why this service is three hours. That's why I even took you to 3 o'clock. What are you going to go do after this that's more important? I got my dry cleaning. Well, I want to get ready to break the fast. I want to set everything up. <laughs> then I'm going to eat when the sun goes down. I'm going to sit it up. I'm going to smell the coffee before I brew it. Yeah. I'm going to get all ready. You know, come on, Nick. Listen, you know what I do? I go home and I sit in a chair and relax. I usually have a spot of tea, but not for three weeks. So God is moving. God is moving. May the best man win. It's you. It's Carolyn. Casey, what, 19 years old? She's over there in Israel for three months on the Daughters of Zion program. Literally on Mount Gerizim right now, she's at Mount Gerizim. And because she's seven hours ahead, she can break the fast. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. She gets to eat before I do. Because she's seven hours ahead. Daily and a dollar short, folks. So little things are happening. Don't think of yourself as insignificant. Every one of you are significant. I know a lot of you have a lot of long faces. You don't have joy. Man, you got to stir it up. you got to say, man. It's just like I would like to remind you, Audrey, I'm going to write you a check. How much is it going to cost to have you walk away from the Hebrews of the Christian faith? I, don't want you, I want you to eat whatever you want, celebrate pagan holidays, go back to Sunday church. I'm going to write you a check right now. How much is it going to take for you to walk away? Can't buy it. She won't take a check. Won't take a check. Because that's, 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 it's, it's, it's very, very interesting.
See, we don't have to have all the answers, everyone, but we have to have a lot of questions. How many of you are familiar with the Valley of Dry Bones in the Bible? And we say, oh, look, the Jews are going back to the land. We say, look, an exceeding great army. But why don't we keep reading? What does it talk about? Two sticks. Nobody wants to talk about that. Not even Messianics. They don't touch that with a 10-foot stick. No, I'm telling you. How do you explain that? He puts two sticks together. One's Judah, one's Ephraim. He makes them one in his hand. Okay, explain it to me, big boy. Come on, bring it on. What do you got for me? Have you ever found a good commentary about that? It's just, it's empty. Think about it. He's going to make two sticks one, everyone. We're close. We're close. So, Father, thank you for these beautiful sons and daughters in this room. Father, thank you for those that are watching live streaming that today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of the Lord. And we want to thank you for this opportunity to make Teshuvah. And as we break the fast, Father, thank you that we denied ourselves and that we look forward to doing it again without you even telling us, Father. Help us to deny ourselves that we can do this thing. We can do without things. And once again, Father, I bless your people. I come against that spirit of infirmity. I lift up all those families that are sick, those that are not well right now, Father, and just speak healing over them. Uh, we know that it can only slow us down. It can't stop us. But by his stripes, we are healed. So thank you, Yeshua. You are so honorable. You, we lift you up, Yeshua, so that all men, women, and children may be drawn unto you. For you are the root of the olive tree, Yeshua. And apart from you, we can do nothing. So thank you, Yeshua. We give you all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. We love you. Thank you for being here with us. Thank you for encouraging us. Thank you for those calls that are coming in right now, Father. Thank you. Because it's important. Because unless we change, there'll be no change. Whatever gets measured gets changed. And Father, we can change this community of Brandon. We can turn Brandon upside down. Because Paul by himself, he turned Ephesus upside down. We can turn this city upside down. And we ask this in the name of Yeshua of Nazareth. Amen. Be blessed. Praise the Lord.